Yesterday, January 7th, a single crew member on board the station experienced a medical situation and is now stable. After discussions with Chief Health and Medical Officer Dr. J.D. Polk and leadership across the agency, I've come to the decision that it's in the best interest of our astronauts to return Crew 11 ahead of their planned departure. After years of operations, something unprecedented has just occurred on the International Space Station. NASA has decided to bring four ISS crew members back to Earth more than a month earlier than planned, after one astronaut experienced a medical issue. This marks the first ever medical evacuation in the station's history, which has been continuously staffed by rotating crews since November 2000. That said, there's no need to panic. NASA officials emphasize that the astronaut is in stable condition and expected to be just fine. NASA's chief health and medical officer, Dr. James Polk, explained that while the ISS is well-equipped medically, it still can't match what's available on Earth. We have a very robust suite of medical hardware on board the International Space Station, Polk said during a Thursday news conference, but we don't have the complete amount of hardware that I would have in the emergency department, for example, to complete a workup of a patient. And in this particular incident, he added, we would like to complete that workup, and the best way to complete that workup is on the ground. NASA Administrator Jared Isaacman also stressed that this is not an emergency situation. This is not an emergency deorbit, even though we always maintain that capability and train for it regularly, he told reporters. He added that the tools needed to properly diagnose and treat the condition simply aren't available on the station, which is why the return timeline was moved up. NASA hasn't shared details about the astronaut involved or the specific medical issue, citing privacy concerns. The crew, known as Crew 11, includes NASA astronauts Zena Cardman and Michael Fink, JAXA astronaut Kimia Yui, and Roscosmos cosmonaut Oleg Platonov. Their mission was originally expected to wrap up no earlier than next month. Normally, NASA wouldn't bring a crew home before the next one arrives, but this isn't a normal situation. Given the circumstances, officials say this was the smartest and safest call to make. The four astronauts launched to the ISS aboard SpaceX's Crew Dragon Endeavor on August 1, 2025, and were already nearing the end of their six-month stay. That likely made the decision to return early a bit easier. Officials also confirmed that there will be no changes to standard return procedures. The deorbit, splashdown, and recovery will all follow normal protocols. The procedures we're using to prepare for that are nominal procedures because, again, what's important to us is the whole crew, said NASA Associate Administrator Amit Kshatriya, and we don't want to do anything, given the nature of the condition, that would put any other additional risk on the crew by diverging from our normal processes. That's why we're doing essentially a controlled, expedited return. As I said, the health issue first came up on Wednesday, January 7th, when NASA announced it was postponing a planned January 8 spacewalk due to a medical concern involving one of the astronauts. That spacewalk was supposed to be carried out by Cardman and Fink. Spacewalks are far from simple undertakings for NASA and its astronauts. Space is an unforgiving environment, and the suits that protect astronauts once they step into the vacuum are extraordinarily complex, essentially person-sized spacecraft. Preparing for an extravehicular activity EVA, can take up to five hours, and once the airlock opens, there is no quick way to exit the suit if something goes wrong. Because of this, NASA does not hesitate to cancel a planned EVA if potential issues emerge in the days or even hours beforehand. Last summer, for instance, officials called off a spacewalk involving Expedition 71 astronauts Tracy Dyson and Matt Dominic due to reported spacesuit discomfort, despite the astronauts already having begun donning their suits. Similar situations have occurred in the past. In August 2020, NASA astronaut Mark Vandehei and Japanese astronaut Akihiko Hoshide had their EVA canceled days in advance because of a minor medical issue. In 2008, medical concerns led NASA astronaut Stanley Love to replace European Space Agency astronaut Hans Schlegel for two of three scheduled spacewalks during an 11-day space shuttle mission to the ISS. Even earlier, during the Apollo era, NASA initially considered canceling Apollo 9 astronaut Rusty Schweikert's EVA in 1969 
after he suffered from space adaptation sickness and vomited early in the mission. On the day of the spacewalk, however, Schweikert convinced mission officials that he was fit to proceed and successfully completed the first EVA test of the Apollo program's spacesuit. Meanwhile, Crew-12 is currently scheduled to launch no earlier than February 15th. NASA Administrator Jared Isaacman said the agency is looking into whether they can launch sooner, though he didn't say how much earlier that might be. Once Crew-11 heads back to Earth, the ISS will temporarily be staffed by just three people. NASA astronaut Chris Williams and Roscosmos cosmonauts Sergei Kudsverchkov and Sergei Mikhaev. The trio arrived at the station in November aboard a Soyuz spacecraft. According to NASA officials, that crew is more than capable of keeping things running smoothly for the foreseeable future. They'll be able to handle all routine station operations just without any spacewalks for now. Having a single Soyuz on board is a configuration we're very familiar with, said NASA Associate Administrator Amit Kshatriya. He added that both Russian and American crew members are fully trained to operate the station systems and continue planned research until the Crew-12 team arrives. Crew-11 is the first NASA mission in the agency's nearly 65-year history of human spaceflight to be cut short because of a medical issue. There have been cases where crew health delayed a launch and technical problems have ended missions early, but this is the first time a crew has returned early for medical reasons. According to Dr. Polk, this move isn't surprising when you look at the numbers. Based on decades of ISS operations, he said models suggested NASA should have needed a medical evacuation about once every three years over the past 25 years. Yet until now, it's never happened. In this case, NASA decided to err on the side of caution and bring the crew home early. Even after decades of sending people into space, there's still a lot we don't fully understand about how space affects the human body. Providing medical care in orbit comes with some serious challenges, especially when astronauts are more than 200 miles above Earth. Limited equipment and resources can turn even relatively minor issues, like a toothache or ear pain, into complicated medical problems. Astronauts go through constant health monitoring before, during, and after their missions, but the space environment still takes a toll. Microgravity and other conditions put real strain on the body, affecting the heart, bones, eyes, kidneys, mood, and more. When it comes to treating medical issues in space, NASA works to equip its astronauts with both the knowledge and tools needed to handle a wide range of potential problems in orbit. Even so, predicting the unpredictable in such an extreme environment remains a challenge. In at least one instance, pharmaceutical supplies aboard the ISS had to be carefully rationed after an astronaut developed a blood clot in a jugular vein. To manage the situation, NASA extended the station's limited supply of blood thinners for more than 40 days until a cargo mission arrived with additional medication. The astronaut was able to remain aboard the ISS for the full six-month mission and returned safely to Earth without complications. NASA's choice to keep the affected astronaut's name and medical details private isn't unusual. In fact, it follows a long-standing policy. Information about how spaceflight affects the human body, or medical issues that come up during missions, is usually shared later as part of broader scientific research, not tied to specific individuals. A good example is space adaptation syndrome, which can cause nausea, vomiting, and dizziness during an astronaut's first hours in microgravity. It's actually very common and has been happening since the earliest days of spaceflight, but it only became widely understood after years of research and academic studies. Another case involved an astronaut who developed jugular venous thrombosis, a potentially dangerous blood clot in the neck, while in space. That incident was also revealed through a scientific journal, and the astronaut's identity was never made public. After SpaceX's Crew-8 mission returned from the ISS in October 2024, one of the four astronauts experienced a medical issue and was taken to a hospital in Florida, but no further details were released. Now, not all the recent news from the International Space Station has been negative. In fact, a small section of the station that has experienced persistent leaks for years appears to have finally stopped venting atmosphere into space. The Russian module hasn't been in its best shape for some time. In 2019, Roscosmos first reported an air leak in its ISS segment, tracing it to the vestibule, known as PRK, connecting a docking port to the Zvezda module, which was launched to low Earth orbit in July 2000. Since then, the leak had worsened, 
doubling from about one pound of air loss per day to slightly over two pounds. Earlier in June, NASA even had to postpone the launch of the private Axiom-4 mission due to a new pressure signal in the Zvezda module. Recently, however, sources indicate that the leaks have stopped. Russian cosmonauts reportedly spent years tracking these tiny leaks like a proverbial needle in a haystack, periodically closing the PRK hatch and checking for dust accumulations that would indicate the leak sites. But why now, after so long, has the problem been addressed? The timing may be linked to Russia's evolving plans for its portion of the ISS. The ISS is approaching retirement, with plans for it to eventually re-enter Earth's atmosphere and plunge into the South Pacific Ocean. Yet Russia intends to reuse its segment of the station for its own orbital habitat. Roscosmos has agreed to keep its cosmonauts aboard the ISS until 2028, after which it will shift focus to the Russian Orbital Space Station. Initially, Russia planned to launch seven new modules between 2027 and 2035, but the strategy has changed. Rather than launching all new modules, Russia now plans to repurpose the existing ISS segments to create a functional orbital station. The Scientific and Technical Council of Roscosmos supported this proposal and approved the deployment of a Russian orbital station as part of the Russian segment of the ISS as the main possible scenario, said Oleg Orlov, director of the Institute of Biomedical Problems at the Russian Academy of Sciences. The adjustments to ROS may also reflect geopolitical realities. Russia's space program has faced challenges in recent years due to tensions with international partners following the invasion of Ukraine. Reusing existing ISS segments could be a practical and strategic solution. Anything can happen in space, even when operations are limited to low Earth orbit. If NASA decides to bring Crew-11 home earlier than planned, it remains unclear how that decision would impact upcoming missions to the ISS or the launch schedule at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Crew-12 is currently slated to launch in mid-February, a timeline that follows the opening of the first launch window for Artemis II the mission intended to send astronauts on a flight around the moon, scheduled for no earlier than February 5th.